Hi folks, and we are rolling. Here we go. I'm a little rusty. I haven't done a stream in like 24 hours, so I don't know. It's going to be pretty rough. <laughs> hi, Albert. Hi, Michael. I'm going to say hi to everybody. I don't know what's going on. It's a live stream. It's around 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, Western Canada. Hi, Toxic. Candas. Thank you. Uh, Zoe, hi Zoe, everybody saying hi, Stacy Lane, Sydney, Kevin, Gary, Missing Skies here, oh, I'm going to check the audio, there we go, we're in business, let's get them, hi Sydney, Kevin, Gary, Stacy, Stetson, Michael Mansfield, thank you. Brian, I got double thumbs down. Yay! Trolls are here early. That's cool. Whimsical XA. I can't even pronounce that one. A little tricky. Whimsical X. Whimsical A's. XA boy. I don't know how to pronounce that one. That's a neat trick. Hi, Rob. Thank you. Hi, Char. Cats alive. Broken ass on there. Woo. We're rolling there. Just passing through. Pippin. Kathy Reed. Divey dude. Diver Duke. Kate. Fukushima Revelations. Missing Sky. Stacy Anderson again. Penny Miller again. Wanna be live 24 Aviator. Richie. Nikki Smith. Cucumber. That's a pretty good one. Oh. Alex Smith. Thanks, Alex. You made it tonight. I know you work hard, bud. Just passing through. Turn the hounds loose, says Albert. Aqua. Missing Sky Toxic. We got uh, quite a few people in there that time. So we do a live stream as much as we can. I've been working on a project to crack this one wide open. Once and for all. Just once and for all. A video to be proud of because the information is undeniable. And I had to redo all the audio today. I spent all day yesterday doing it. I was exhausted. I passed out, didn't wake up till like nine o'clock last night. I still didn't have the energy to do a live stream. Then you have to do all the audio, all the pictures, all the stories. And I'm gonna be about 360 nuclear stories about radiation. And it's a lot of stories. And so if I spend a minute on each story, then that's six hours. So we can't do that. And so I have to find a way to, to still use them because that's, I can't do it without those numbers. You know, out of, out of uh, thousands, they, they were the best ones. So I got the whole story. And I'll jump off this. Hi, Ping. I'll jump off this. Dwayne, Lisa... See if we can say hi to anybody else before I, I jump into the game here. Okay, that's fine. I'll bring up my other one here while we're waiting. I see uh, E and E News is out with more interesting stories. Excuse me. Fukushima airborne plumes cause significant dip disposition of radioactivity over North America. There's an understatement. Um, around 13% of all the radioactive iodine released into the atmosphere was deposited over U.S. and Canada. I really couldn't care less about the iodine. I really couldn't. I care about the iodine 132. I care about the iodine 133. Uh, they're more worrisome than the iodine 131, folks. There was a lot more of that than iodine 131. There was 10, 15, 20 times more. I dying 132 and 133. And and you gotta remember folks that you can't make iodine 131. Every three iodine 131 there's a iodine 129 with a 15 million year life, half life. So 150 year life, because it's always times ten, is a good estimate, a good way to to guesstimate how the half lives work. So like cesium 134, they say, oh it's got two years half life. Yeah, then it decays to another radioactive isotope. Half of it does. 
Then half of that, after its half-life decays, and so it still left half, half, quarters, sixteenths, all the way up uh, for 20 years. So what sounds like two years is really bad, is actually uh, 20 years, because of times 10, because of the way half-life flow works. Right, that's so important. Everything that comes out of their mouth is a lie because they don't include that. Right? The global warming activists out there, the enthusiasts, the people that are demonizing everybody for cardboard and plastic and tin cans and just love the nuclear power because they, they were tricked. It's not their fault, right? They were tricked, deceived, the Al Gore creatures of the planet. Like you say, how's Al Gore going to solve global warming if he got a billion dollars in his bank account? What the frig is he going to do? What does he do again? He demonizes you. He takes away your ability for the future. There's 90,000 ships on the ocean. Each ship burns the equivalent of what's known as bunker fuel. And this is left over from the production of petroleum products. And instead of putting it on a toxic waste site for 1800 bucks a ton, they put it in these big container ships across the ocean and they burn it. And so it's very, it only burns about 17% efficiency. And so the rest of it goes into the environment, into the ocean. And one ship is equal to 50 million cars. 16 of those ships, those big container ships across the ocean, that park in your port. Well, one of those ships produces more pollution than all the cars in Canada, New Zealand and Australia combined. One ship. 16 is up more than all the cars on the planet. 90,000 of these ships that are on the ocean every day is the equivalent of 42 trillion people on the planet every day driving automobiles. Driving automobiles. With terrible, terrible mileage. Automobiles. But nuclear power is the way forward, they say, because we're out there burning the fossil fuels in our little cars. Because we got tin cans and plastic and cardboard, because everything is tin plans, tin cans, plastic, and cardboard. That's the society. We have we don't even try to recycle it. We claim we do, but we dump it. We throw it away for nothing. But that's what ninety thousand container ships on this planet produces more pollution than forty two trillion people on this planet every day. But you're the bad one. But you see how the game works? Not go after the real issue. But direct everybody to attack you, marginalize you, demonize you, make you feel bad for being on the planet. Meanwhile, Eric, they're having five, six, seven, eight, nine kids each. But you're a terrible person if you have more than one kid. And we take 4,800 40, peer-reviewed academic studies every day, three a minute, thousand-page academic published studies. They're published, not saying what's not published every day. And lock it up in the ivory towers at Elsevier, Springer, and Wiley, the three biggest publishing houses on the planet with 20,000 academic publishing institutions at their fingertips. And they get the copyrights of all the universities and the institutions that are taxpayer funded. Right? And they also call the shots. They appoint the presidents, they appoint the professors, and they got to be pro nuke. All professors at all institutions are pro-nuke. They have to teach pro-nuke. Their students will all be pro-nuke. Their faculty that they hang out with is all pro-nuke. They might have some kind of a saying here once and there and get some kind of attention. But they're pro-nuke. They'll get told to shut up. Just continue demonizing everybody for their tin cans, their pop bottles, and their plastic, and their cardboard. And you can have your tenor. You can have your fame. You teach at Harvard. You teach at Yale. We'll put you up in the Commonwealth. We'll spread you out there. But, I mean, no one gets to read your papers because they're locked up. Hi, Thomas. We got Thomas Schollenberger uh, visiting us again tonight, as he has many nights now, and we appreciate that. Anybody don't know Thomas, you should go listen to his vocals. <laughs> That'll make you feel better right away, folks. Guarantee you. And uh, the video I'm going to put out in a couple of days, there's no way I'll get it finished tomorrow. It's 17 parts. Some of these parts are 10 minutes. And so i got to edit everything down, something palatable. Uh, but the idea is to show you everything. To show you, to uncover the whole friggin' thing. 
There's no no corner that I didn't shine light into in the last five days. I've worn myself out. But I got all the audio done. <laughs> right? And I got the videos all done. I got to marry them up. Re-render that. Then I got to chop that up. Reorganize that. So it's huge. It's 360 headlines. That's that are categorized and categories and genres. I cover everything. I don't miss nothing, I don't think. I probably did. And hopefully folks figure that out and tell me what I missed. And I'll do that. I'll, I'll do an addum to it. Uh, but I don't think I missed much. I'm pretty good. Because I'm tired of doing this every night. And understanding that it's better to put out something really tangible for everybody. So they can actually encompass it the same way I do. So they see what I see. Right? And that we're on the same page. That's really important for me that I accomplish that. And I've been extraordinarily hard at it. I'm not sure how good it'll be because there's a lot of chopping and dicing, so there might be some weird audio in it. But you will have the complete picture. There will be nobody out there who will be able to argue with you anymore. And they'll get it, right? No matter who you show it to. They they can't argue away anything. You know, they can't they won't be able to debate anything. You know, to say that, oh, I don't know about this, or I don't know about that. I got it all. And the point is that people need that. And I don't, and I'm looking at it today, and I came to the realization that I might not even uh, need to ever do another video, you know, like that, ever. Like, it makes what I'm going to do every day here now redundant so bad, because... The information is what we all want, right? That's why I'm here each night because I share it because I got a lot of it. And I know a lot of people don't know where to find it or how to go about it or how to string it together and how to understand it or the context to it. And that's something that I got a good handle on and that I feel compelled I got no options but to do that all the time. You know, I'm not... It's This is not something I could ever dreamt in my wildest dreams that I would be feverishly working at constantly for people but I understand the issues about it I understand that people have every right to know and that a lot of people are trying to know and a lot of people who just don't know if they were given a tool in the proper presentation or the encompassment of it the actual entire thing uh, I think people are, are smart enough to make uh, intelligent decisions if they got the information. It's as, as simple as that. I've seen that in my own life, that once I that does the presentation, show them the information, they're extraordinarily quick now with uh, answers, when an hour before they weren't. They had no concept of answers. But all of a sudden, every time you try to say something to them after that, they come up with the answers when they were your biggest foe just shortly before. Right? And so... The idea is uh, the truth has to come out for something else to happen. Nuclear power has destroyed our planet. It's destroyed every aspect of everybody's culture and life on top of that. It's a private companies and corporations that are funding it. Insurance companies won't touch it. They can't contain it. They've never been able to contain it. How can they ever expect to excel it, accelerate what they're doing if they can't even contain it? Where's the logic? Where's the rationality? Where's the forethought? Where's the checks and balances? It's not the checks and balances are what you're paying into your taxes all the time for their wages and their swimming pools and their lifestyles and their jet settings and their prestigious dinners and events and pictures and posters and everything else and media interviews, parties, awards. You know, the Nobel Prizes are such a joke. I, I remember that picture I had here. There was a restaurant was giving out a free Nobel Prize with every order of French fries. Get your Nobel Prize. Because that's how much they're really worth. The price of a French fry. They're licensed to go out and lie and murder people. All nuclear scientists are mass murderers. They don't tell their family what isotopes really do. Right? Nuclear scientists... Don't sit there and tell their families that uranium-238 has 
cause 70% of the children in Fallujah to be born with no eyes, no mouth, no face, no arms, no fingers, totally dependent upon their loved ones till the end of time, who are also dying of uh, dirty bombs being fired into their communities. All those bullets you're firing in all these wars are dirty bombs. Uranium-238, look it up yourself. You fired 5 million bullets a month when it's supposed to be in a sarcophagus. That's your nuclear industry. That's your power. That's your wonderful power plants. That's your wonderful global warming solution. Right? They tell you that it's going to do it, but in reality, they're after firing it in everybody's homes in poor people's countries. Five million orphans in Afghanistan. And all of those homes were beat up and fired into schools and universities and hospitals and shops and playgrounds have all been hit with dirty bombs. Right? And they, they tell you, oh, you got to be scared because uh, Al-Qaeda going to come get you with a dirty bomb in your city. And we got to group all your children. That's what global warming advocates have brought to us. Right? They, they made everybody afraid to speak out and afraid to debate or discuss. Global warming's real. 90,000 ships on the ocean burning bunker fuel. There's 42 trillion people on the planet every day. It should never have happened. It should never have happened. There's no reason to do that. There was no reason to do that. They could have built... They were, they were using sailboats 400 years ago. Five and 600 feet long. That would cross the oceans. That's a fact. Because they found the boat sank on different parts of the ocean. And they were able to date it back to then. The decay and everything else. And like nuclear power has no use on this planet. You can't contain anything about it. The storage pools at all the nuclear plants are evaporating all the time because of the hot fuel rods that are in it that could murder everything on this planet. Just one of those rods can kill all the mammals on the planet. That's how potent and toxin and deadly these are till the end of time, till the very end of time. Our planet is, you know, these things are good till 4.5 billion years. They're irradiated. Right? This is re what you... Because it's chain reaction. You change the gammas, you change the, the betas, the alphas, and those dirty bombs that you're firing all over Iraq and Afghanistan and other countries, 2.5 million a month for nine years, they're all dirty bombs each month. 2.5 million dirty bombs a month. They're supposed to be locked up in the sarcophagus. That they tell you is locked up in the sarcophagus. They dump it into the ocean, they tell you it's locked up in the sarcophagus. They dump 45-gallon drums everywhere in the ocean, tell you it's locked up in the sarcophagus, that they have the checks and balances, that the NRC, like Alex, Alison McFarlane, that there's nothing to worry about when you have everything to worry about. And that's not right. That's not even sensible. And police won't arrest them. The prosecutors won't charge them. The universities won't take their degrees away. Because they're one and the same. And they think that they can keep the charade alive for a little bit longer. That they might get a pension out of it. Or an early retirement. They'll get an early retirement there, right? Cancer. Because cancer is coming to everybody. You can't, your children, everybody gets cancer. Because of what they're doing and what they've done. Cancer doesn't grow overnight. You know, that's the fact. But it grows. And the evidence is overwhelming. Unimaginably overwhelming. Inconceivably overwhelming. We've covered it repeatedly. But the next video coming out, we'll put it all together in a, in a complete package. It has That has to be done. Because that's the only way the story can ever come out, is if it's in a complete package. That's why they keep putting bits and pieces everywhere, so you can't see the whole package. So nobody can understand the concepts of what... Nuclear power is actually all about directed energy weapons. That's all it's about, directed energy weapons. The isotopes, you can't have a directed energy weapon. The big powerful killer lasers without isotopes, without exotic isotopes. Without, and you've got to keep making these isotopes. That's why the MOX fuel, the concoctions of MOX fuel from uh, reactor number three at Fukushima in particular, was all about. They were taking missiles 
that are already enriched uranium plutonium, taking that and remilling it through what they claim was nuclear power. But you don't need those isotopes to make nuclear power. You just need your normal uranium. And <coughs> to do this to us and lie to us and have like Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution come out and try to claim that potassium-40 is what it turns into, like cesiums and the plutonium, uranium. The isotopes that were coming out of Fukushima when they got around 1,500 miles outside, they turned into potassium-40, and that's okay. That's Woods Hole's major speech. Everybody from Woods Hole, Oceanographic Institution, out there uses that trick, because potassium-40 is insignificant indigenous background radiation. It's in your bananas, it's in your blanket, it's in your toothpaste, among other things. It's in your water. And some water might have 9,000 becquels of potassium-40 in it. Some might have 90,000. Very rare, but that happens. And that's legal, apparently. That's pretty high, though, when it comes to that kind of stuff, because it's extraordinary on the planet to have those numbers. And so that's like the radon uh, is in that ground also that makes it very dangerous. But that's very rare. That's so rare. It's um, it's almost unheard of for someone to be hurt by insignificant background radiation, but it has happened, but it's extraordinarily rare. And to, to claim, like Jay Cullen, who used to work at Oceanographic Institution, that the radiation, he was out on a cruise representing Canada, and he claimed that the radiation coming from Fukushima wouldn't would be insignificant. It would be like getting an X-ray. I mean, that is so far from the truth you can't even imagine. Because when you ingest an isotope, it's it stays with you forever. You get an X-ray, you walk away. You got a little bit of radiation at you. You didn't ingest. You didn't have to go home and wash the radiation off your body. You can't ingest an X-ray. But when you ingest uh, the radioactive isotopes from Fukushima, you will get cancer. There's no back doors to that. You can't turn that off. You can't change that. These are microns, say two microns small. They're one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter. They're insignificant in the size, but they're extraordinarily in their abilities. They're like little nuclear engines for the lifetime of that isotope and that radiation, those hot particles, those hot atoms. Uh, which were a phenomenon that came into Fukushima. I remember Chernobyl was one-third the size. And look at the carnage that has wrecked. Um, 3,600 square miles still evacuated. Over a million reported dead now that they have declassified the information and, and translated the information from the studies. And that there is no li very little insects down there, that the birds are completely changed everything has changed there's very little wildlife down there but they, they pretend there's wildlife everywhere what is complete opposite from the studies and that in the late 40s they evacuated 7500 communities in russia that are still evacuated because of radiation it's destroying our planet now because of fukushima but think about it they evacuated 7500 communities in 9000 square miles they still stayed at it and they had another accident. They had to evacuate another 1,000 square miles forever. Think about it. They tried to pour it all in the bottom of a the pond. They had a dry drought. The pond went dry. They had to evacuate another 1,000 permanently. That's just one event caused all that carnage. 11,000 square miles permanently evacuated. And that stuff gets picked up in rain. It gets picked up in dust clouds. It's picked up in storms and dragged all over their country. And that 50 becquels, a low-level background radiation, will cause, just living in that environment, will cause permanent, right away, permanent damage to your organs. Because they're not like potassium-40. Potassium-40 has got nothing to do with it. But like I was saying earlier, Ken Buesler was saying that because Americans are allowed to have 90,000 becquels in one place in America, it's legal, in their drinking water, potassium-40. That's why Americans and Japan is allowed to dump 90,000 becquels of cesium-137. Right, and I put the videos below about that.
actually there's a link I didn't I forgot to put the links below tonight it'll be there but it's on all my other videos you can go back and see the Ken Buseler 15 minute presentation I done on him and Jay Cullen the biggest lawyers on the planet the biggest manipulators on the planet the biggest traitors to humanity on the planet when they are trained and they know better all nuclear pro-nuclear nuclear scientists are continuously constantly lying to everybody including their own friends their own families and their own loved ones and but they actually know the difference they truly know the difference they know what's going on but they refuse to make a stand they refuse it because they won't have a job no more they won't have their pension no more they're not going to have it anyway because this cancer will grow start showing up real bad in the next year or two you can't avoid it see right so it's not like you got death plumes are going to come over and kill you instantly but they'll start killing you on a big scale and not only that because the same companies that are supporting that support gmo the same universities support gmo and gmo has no nutrients in it no minerals in it these are all one and the same and so you have no potassium no magnesium no iron no calcium in your foods if you're buying them at grocery shops it's got a label on it from any of the big ones like Kraft everything Kraft will give you cancer anyway not only that because of glossophates and formaldehydes it enhances your cancer and stops you from uptaking nutrients it's the utter betrayal you can't betray society any more than that you're turning your back they have turned their backs on society permanently and you can't change the carnage that they've done to society you can't change that back you can't win that back you you know everything on this planet has changed because of nuclear fallout for a handful of corporations for the military industrial machine to create scarier and stupider weapons and every country is out there doing it to us they can't stop themselves it's the way they suck the money out of you it's the way to destroy all your 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 history they destroy your DNA and your genetics it's on purpose for a paycheck the stupidest thing ever the stupidest thing imaginable and now we're ushering in a world of robots and drones and police states because they understand you're waking up they understand that the only way to control you is to try to make you think that they control you but they can't control you 65,000 TSA can't do jack shit to you if you say no if 300,000 300 million Americans with handguns says fuck off they will fuck off if 300 million Americans with handguns snap the police are dead they haven't got a hope there's a thousands to one and they're armed police police can't deal with that they can only control you if you let them control you nobody can control you if you don't want them to control you but they try to keep you in that paradigm right they tax you and they let the corporation put all their money in offshore accounts where they don't pay any taxes those companies like Starbucks those companies like McDonald's they kill the mom and pops in your community and they were the ones who paid taxes corporations put their money in offshore accounts no one left to pay taxes got to come after you got to tax everything about you now they got to try to control you because they lost it they know they can't avoid everything that's coming they can't avoid you waking up they can't stop that not even with an internet kill switch can they stop it because the knowledge is out there the, the doubt is out there the mistrust is already out there they're just hanging by their teeth the whole friggin time they're hanging by their fingertips the entire time trying to hang on to you people to keep them in a paradigm that they can't keep them in because nobody will watch their shit anymore no one pays attention to the crap anymore nobody cares anymore about them but they got to maintain control and so nuclear power has infiltrated every aspect of your life but it also polluted every aspect of you and your loved one's life and there's going to be a repercussion for that as the cancer starts showing up in their own lives in their own children in their own friends their own relatives their own spouses and their own family members their own loved ones are dying of cancer too and they still can't turn it off they still can't say no because they won't have a job no more 
because there's so much of it dependent upon it because it's such an easy grab because they have so much carnage I already committed so much damage I already done they, they can't store it it shouldn't be on the planet you can't you can't exploit something that you can't control you can't exploit it not this kind of technology is what I'm talking about you can't exploit technology like nuclear energy when you can't control the isotopes, which is why you have the rules and regulations to control the isotopes. But even before the regulations were implemented, they knew they couldn't control the isotopes. They wouldn't even try. There's 41 miles of open pit at Hanford, of yellow cake, of americium, of all the craziest stuff imaginable, uranium-238 and the contaminants, sitting in open online trenches. 450 billion gallons dumped directly into the soil into the barrels in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s in the Hanford. But they keep telling you, oh no, we got it in a sarcophagus. It's locked up. But it's not just North America. It's all the other countries on the planet. Who the freak knows what Israel is doing with their nuclear material besides firing it into Palestine where they created 5 million refugees and there's a million of those in the Jordan. They got no more water. They got no more land. A million went into Syria. They got no more water. They got no more land. A million went over to Lebanon and Egypt and Damascus. They got no water. They got no land to share. And so Israel creates conflict over there too. Probably chemtrailing the scars over to uranium 238. That's how twisted those fuckers are. Anybody willing to create 5 million refugees? For 61 years, and then scream, Oh, poor, poor, pitiful me. And by the way, you know, I'm talking about that. They're a nuclear power company, and they're, they won't. They're talking about Iran with 49 military bases around it as a threat. They never heard of Fukushima? Because what they do with their depleted uranium rounds, they fire it into Palestine, they fire it in everywhere else, they give it away. They dump it in the Palestinian territory and dig holes and bury it in the fucking ground. It's the twistedest thing imaginable. India and Pakistan, nobody knows what they're doing with their stuff. Nobody friggin' knows what, but it ain't good. It's not in sarcophagus. It's up in Kashmir, dumped in the hills, in the open pits. No different than what they've done to Fallujah, you know. Think about Fallujah. Well, that's just an example of the deformities where women won't even have babies there anymore because 70% of them are born with no eyes or no mouth or no face. Just lumps of flesh from dirty bombs. Think about those bullets. They're putting off neutrons. They're putting off x-rays in your community. Your children are playing in that stuff, salvaging pieces of their home, digging through all that uranium, digging... It's in the topsoil, it's in their water. Ten years of fire and two and a half million rounds of depleted uranium, dirty bombs, dirty bullets a month. The A-10 Warthog shoots a ton and a half a minute of uranium-238. It's not coated, it's not tipped. It's solid to your 38 and it's contaminated with americium and all the other nasties that are supposed to be in a sarcophagus. Nuclear, nuclear power is the most is the devil, the very devil on the planet. It's the very evil, the most evilest thing imaginable on the planet. The people in Oklahoma, Oklahoma, McAllister, Oklahoma, they got a job, and all they do is make depleted uranium rounds, twenty train car loads a day. These are the most evilest people imaginable, the most stupidest people imaginable. Because if they look at the licensing of the NRC, nuclear power plants are supposed to have it in a sarcophagus, not turn it into a dullet, dirty bullet, fired it into somebody else's country. That's all McAllister does, it makes depleted uranium rounds. All the people that work for him, all they're doing is making dirty bombs. They're the worst people on the planet. You cannot possibly get more evil than that. Making dirty bombs to fire in other people's countries into their homes. They don't fire dirty bombs 
at tanks. They fire them into people's homes, into their hospitals, into their schools, into their playgrounds, into their farms, into their water supplies, into their water sheds, in every aspect of their country. And that uranium-238 ain't going to stop radiating the country for 4.5 billion years. But those isotopes are found in the mountaintops right around this planet within a year. Out of the ice cores, out of the mountains, you'll find the isotopes from all the wars. That's a fact. That's well known. Because the isotopes will just keep liberating themselves forever. But what's going on in Fukushima is a proof that nuclear power has no place on this planet ever. And that the people that are perpetrating this all should be hung in the streets, hung from trees. That's okay with me. I got no problem with that. These people know what they're doing. Right? They don't got no mercy for me. They don't got no respect for me. They don't get no compassion from me. They don't get an easy break from me. The universities, the lecturers, the propaganda machines, the mouthpieces, the bootlicking, cheerleading lapdogs of the military industrial complexes, nuclear isotope industry for directed energy weapons. Do they understand what they're doing? Do they understand the implications of every day of their activities? Never goes away. Kills forever. People try to marginalize and say it's like potassium-40. They're the, they're the monsters. They are monsters. That's the monsters of our society. They sold out. These are the creatures that we have to we have to hold accountable. And the only way we're going to hold them accountable is using our voices. My voice is nothing. It's insignificant. It's irrelevant. But if there was a million of us, we enhance each other synergistically. We take them down. We knock them out of their little comfort. Uh, we take away their comfort zone. We destroy their ability to operate. We destroy their ability to hide away. We shine a fucking light on them. Right? A big bright light. A million voices strong. And we can do that tomorrow. We can do that the next day. We don't know. If we don't try, nothing will happen. Except for death and cancers and carnage and utter destruction of, of our entire habitat, our entire environment, our biosphere. How can we sustain what we already done and what we continue to do? We can't sustain any of them. So it has to stop. It just can't continue. And that's what we're here for. We're here to make sure we point a real strong finger, shine a bright light on the mortal enemy of this planet, which is the nuclear, pro-nuclear machine on this planet. The, the people, the lobbyists in particular, the lawmakers, and the people that fund it privately. Because that's how it's funded. They, besides the fact they steal all your money with the lobbyists. And that's always for nuclear waste, though. But they go dump it in the ocean and they steal that money. Billions and billions and billions a year. They steal the money and they dump it in the ocean. Billions and billions a year. They steal your money and they dump the toxic waste in the landfills. Billions and billions a year. They take your money. They steal it. None of them will ever be arrested. None of them were ever convicted. None of them were ever charged. None of them were ever accused. Because everybody's in on it. In the system itself. They're all making money off it. And they think that they're the power. Once again, the TSA thinks it's the power. 300 million Americans with handguns could sort that out pretty friggin' quick. And they probably will. Groping millions and millions, hundreds of millions. What is it, like 700 million a year? They grope and molest these chicken necks that couldn't get a job at Walmart. That's where they got their, they advertised for TSA on coffee cups and pizza boxes. At shit places. Because that's what they want. They want disgusting perverts to fuck you over. To, to make you feel like you don't want to do anything anymore. But all the rich ones, they get a free pass. That's what's coming for everybody. They're setting the stage and trying to control you. But that's not going to work. That can't work. It'll never work. They're hiring and building the infrastructure 
They're trying to scare you. The SNA, the NSA is listening to you. Go suck my friggin' dick. I don't give a fuck about you. Fuck you. You bag of shit. You cheap fucking sellouts. Fuck you. Go fuck yourselves. I don't give a fuck about you. Fuck you. Fuck off. You don't control me. I don't give a fuck about you. You're a pussy. You're a wimp. You know, you don't can't shine a light on me. You can't come out there and make a fucking video and call me out. You gotta hide away like a coward. Like a traitor that you are. Pretending you're somebody special to your fucking family when you're not. When you're nothing. When you're insignificant. When you're a useless fucking maggot. You haven't done nothing for nobody. Never stopped a fucking terrorist attack because you funds them. You're nobody. You're a fucking leech on society. That's what fucking NSA, CIA, Mossad, FBI, CSIS, all of you fucking inbreeds. Trying to fucking stop people like us from having a real debate for the nuclear industry. To keep the global warming alarmists fucking on our asses all the time. They're useless. These people have no power. They have no courage. These are not heroes. These are not people that our children will ever look up to under any circumstances. These are the traitors of our society who never friggin' once done their job. Their job was to take away the corporation's human rights. Stop imprisoning our children for fucking smoking a fucking joint, giving them a criminal record. Why their children never see the room of a court. If you go into the courtroom in any country, it's non-government children. And it's the most impoverished in the community. And it's always nobody can afford a lawyer. You go to any court system in Canada, you go to any court system in America, and it's all non-government children. Non-government employees, relatives. Non-government connected. And they're cronies. Right? It's the most bigoted, biased, racist system imaginable. It serves only the stupidest people on the planet. That when this goes down, they haven't got a fucking hope in hell. They're going to lose everything, just like the rest of us. Their loved ones are going to get cancer, just like everybody else's. The lobbyist children will get cancer, just like yours. Nobody's fucking immune. Nobody can run or hide from it. Nuclear power in any institution means the institution has no credibility. It means the professors, the people that work there are fucking scum. It means they are the traitors. Just like they lock up 4,800 peer review academic studies every day. Imagine if we took those 4,800 peer review academic studies that you paid for. You paid for the university. You paid for the heat, the lights, the professors tenured. You paid for everything. And you can't read those studies. And that a handful of corporations get the copyrights. And there's no kickbacks to the institutions. To the professors or the students. To the thousands of man hours for each one of those studies. You pay for that and they lock it away. So you can never friggin' understand. But things have changed. There's enough God out there that we do understand. And that if we took those 4,800 peer review academic studies. And we put them to work to moral at something, and the day after at something else, we'd solve those two problems. And if we took 4,800 peer review academic studies every day, 365 days a year, and put them to work to solve a fucking problem, we'd solve it. But no, we lock it all away. And we say, hey, Fox News, they're going to be able to read everybody's mind in a few years, or CNN, uh, they're going to be a super vaccine for everybody. You got any idea what that really truly means? If cable tells you something, it's the most evil thing imaginable. They're trying to lull you in. They're trying to acclimate you to be in a prison that they enjoy. That they think that they are they reach the top of the world because they work for cable or mainstream media. But they're despised. And now they know it. Now they feel it. Now they understand that their, their end is near. 
You know, that's literally what it's came down to at this stage is we have to take our country back. But it could be so easy to take 4,800 peer-reviewed peer studies and put nutrition back in our food. To put cancer-fighting agencies in our food. What a novel fucking idea. To take 4,800 peer-reviewed studies tomorrow and try to figure out how to build a sarcophagus. To put some of this shit in. For the first time in history. Novel fucking idea. And the day after 4,800 peer-reviewed studies on how to store energy from the sun. Novel friggin' idea. Liquid air expands 700 times. Easy to make. Store it in big tanks. And as it expands, it turns a generator. You can generate... You know, if you had 50 cascade, those big welding tanks in your garden, and they were full of air, and you had a compressor-driven unit for your home, you can even convert it with water, use water, flowing water. 30 PSI of water will run all the appliances in your home. 30 PSI. Those cascade tanks, I used to use them for diving six hours on a tank. Those big cascade tanks. Well, you know, there's 3,500 PSI. We were using them at one point with 6,500 PSI. And so that's a lot of pressure stored up. That's enough to run a household. 50 of those tanks in my garden would run a household for about a week without having to recharge them with air. And you can charge them all up with air in about a day. But you could be self-sustained. You know, you can... Just with a simple system like that. But imagine if you were to put 4,800 peer review academic studies every day in order to, and that's my design by the way, if you put 40, 4,800 peer review academic studies every day into making that better or to making a better or something totally better, we wouldn't have any of the issues. We would have electric cars, electric scooters, electric bikes, motorcycles, uh, and capacitors instead of batteries. Where you got rid of all that weight and you were able to... They use capacitors all the time, have for a long, long time. Camera flashes. And they cracked that code a long time ago, but they put all their time, all their energy, all their monetary into making nuclear this and nuclear that. There's two million industries based upon nuclear technology and try, try, to, try to fit it in every aspect of your life when it should never be in any aspect of your life. They could have come up with it. Seven other ways to do everything they're doing. They really could if they tried. And you don't know and I don't know. They could have come up with a thousand ways if they tried. But they won't try. They come up with 6,500 ingredients, 65,000 toxic chemicals that never had no environmental human impact studies and they grandfathered that in in 1981. That's the Environmental Protection Agency. So they had all that time, but they still never went back in and looked at those chemicals and said, well, that's carcinogenic. That's very toxic. They'd never once done that. They said, no, knock your socks off. That's why you got 4,000 chemicals legally in your cigarettes. Why are they putting 4,000 chemicals in your cigarette? Why are they putting 4,000 chemicals in your cigarette? Why the fuck would you do that? Who the fuck sat there and said, hey, I got a great idea. Let's put 4,000 chemicals in our cigarettes. Ha, ha, ha. Brilliant, George. Let's do it, everybody. And so everybody puts 4,000 chemicals in their cigarette. Now, because of the kickback, they actually got cigarettes out there with no chemicals in it. Think about that one. Player's Plane, True Plane, has no chemicals in it. It's just nicotine. They've been doing peer review studies for about 45 years trying to link nicotine to cancer when there's 4,000 other chemicals in your cigarette. Can you possibly get any stupider than that? But you keep that headline going, another study shows could be a link. I can make a link in anything if you gave me enough money, enough time, enough energy, enough motivation. But to keep the money coming, I wouldn't show you the whole thing. i just wait for the next study. Right, our academic institutions, they're all pro-nuclear. And so everything is based around pro-nuclear. How can nuclear make it better? How can nuclear ever make anything better? It can't. 
nuclear power nu is isotopes, weaponized isotopes for the military industrial complex. It has nothing to do. I miss Milky. I just went for how long? I just so, I'm just so sick of the lies and the manipulations. <coughs> I'm glad I just yacked for 49 minutes. Because I was going to go through to some of the stuff I'm going to be putting into my video coming out in a few days. But I really didn't want to touch that stuff. I want to save it for the video. But it's so good I wanted to put some out there. And I was like, nah, better not. We live in a society where we were lied to. And we were never aware of what the lies were. Now we live in a society where we're lied to. And we have the ability to know what the lies are. We have the ability to look a little bit further, a little bit deeper. A little bit more honest, a little bit more sincere, to put our thinking caps on and look at the rational reality of what is true and what is false. And what we've done for over three months is we've come at this every angle imaginable. We've come at this every angle conceivable, I think. That's why I've came to the point where I have 360 articles that I'm putting together a video with and that I got all the shots done. I got all the audio done. I just got to sit there and splice it all together and hack away at it until it's platable and redo the audio and re-render all of that. It's hard to render these big files. Not that I don't care. Don't bother me at all. But I'm just saying it takes a while. And then you got to listen to it and watch it and check it and make sure you never made no mistakes or the mistakes are acceptable. <laughs> In my case, the mistakes, the mistakes I make are, ah, oh, that'll be okay. We'll put that out there. I don't mind that, that's fine. Oh, I missed a little bit of audio there, ah, fuck it. I can't sit there and do another four hours rendering. <laughs> just can't. I've been doing this for eight years, just can't, sometimes anyway. It's like a song, it's like a guitar piece. It's never finished, it's just good enough to go. Well, this one is a bit better than that, obviously. I redone all the audio today, the 17 takes. Some of them up to 10 minutes. And it was four days of prep, just labeling everything, putting everything into files and folders and categories and genres. And going out and finding anything that I thought was missing. Relentless. It's been relentless. It's relentless how much time I got put this into this now. And I decided that if I don't put out something, so everybody can understand what I see, how I see it why I see it and who, who I see it from and what it means to you know in context how can anybody how can we create uh, millions of people that are knowledgeable how if we don't have that there because everything we get is broken pieces right always always broken up so much with no more context with not enough never enough information and that's why I've worked so hard to put this together and, you know, I, I like once again, you know, I'm, I'm making this and I'm saying to myself, it makes me obsolete, thank goodness, in a good way, that when I put that out there, that in one way it makes me obsolete because everybody now is so knowledgeable. If they take their time and watch it even once, right, you can't, you can't. You can't never deny it, no matter how bad you might say this is not true. If you watch that video coming out in a few days, you can't deny it. 360 headlines. They can't all be lying. <laughs> right? But it's all in context. And it's a lot of the stuff I've never covered here. Because um, I just never get to it. Remember like a month ago I had 300 headlines in a folder. I still never got to that folder. That folder is still sitting there. I still haven't touched it. None of those headlines I don't think are in this one that I'm putting out. That's how crazy this stuff is. There's so much available, but it's all hid away. It's all snatched away. It's all denied. It's all manipulated constantly. If you can't shift to it and don't know what to do with it, it'll overwhelm you. My entire computer. I don't know how much I got there now, but it's, um, it's inconceivable uh, how much I got. It's like 200 gigabytes in the last three months. It's unimaginable how much material I got on Fukushima and radiation. And lectures, I've, I've, I had 7,000 lectures before you even started this road. From Harvard, Yale, Berkeley, MIT, Stanford, the Oxfords. 
all the major, like I study professors for most of uh, the last decade. I like studying professors. I like listening to them. I like, that's how I sleep, listening to I still do that. I listen to lectures. And some people are really good teachers. I mean, they got the job because they're extraordinarily good teachers. That's why they get paid the big bucks. They're very engaging, very witty, and they got to keep the students interested. Right? That's what makes them the bigger shakers and movers besides the bullshitters. But you learn a lot off of that. Even though you don't want to learn that particular subject, you're learning professors, so you got to learn everything about them. You're learning them, so you pick up everything in between. And subjects. And that's 54 minutes. Pretty good. I thought I was geared out at 49 minutes, but <laughs> after <laughs> 54 minutes, I'm truly geared out. I miss Mel Geist. Yeah, thank you, honey. Dana loves you, too. You're an awesome soul. Make no mistake about it. Amthurst, Pam, Stacy Lane, Albert, everybody that's you. Anybody yelling at me tonight? Good night, John. Thank you, John. We see you, bud. Thank you, Miss Milky. No more lies. Thank you. And cats alive, everybody. Of course, I don't do this without you. Stetson, Pam, Tree. Yeah, you should grow your own tobacco tree. Uh, just don't put the 4,000 chemicals in there. It's actually pretty good without the chemicals, right? Uh, hi, Dean. Lunar Legion. I say hi and goodbye to everybody. Zokatam Tomato Shift. Uh, Stacy Lane. Hi, Thomas. Thank you, Thomas. Sydney, Albert. Uh, Sweet Jane, Daisy, uh, Dwayne, Lisa, The Limp, Cats Alive, we got them all. Yeah, we got them all. Um, just Missing Sky, thank you, Kathy Reed, Sandra, Mickey. Uh, geez, this thing is moving pretty quick, eh? I can't keep up with that. Hang on, I'm going to try to say goodnight to a few more people before I give it up. Mary, Sanders, Sandra, Diver Dude, Kate, Sydney Sergeant, Ken, just passing through. Woo! Got a few that time. And Dave Maurer, Standing Foot, DC. I know I missed a few people. Candace, Red Button Studio. Thank you. You'll find links below my video in a few minutes after <laughs> I forgot them tonight for some reason. Uh, that's about it. And good stuff. There you go. Okay, folks. Yeah, it's almost impossible. Thanks, Stacy. Richie. Uh, yeah. You got it. Char. Let me see if I can catch a few more. Pippin. Kevin. Brian. I'm getting pretty good at that, eh? Jill. Thanks, Jill. Para Avalis. I can't pronounce it. Dean H. Aviator. See, I know I forgot somebody here tonight. And remember, folks, um, nutrition. There's a link below. DCA. Turmeric. Has 600 peer review academic studies, extraordinarily good for you. The DCA link below reduces all tumors by 70%. That's your solution. Nutrition, eating organic, support the little uh, shops in your community, support the fresh vegetable markets in your community. Be that market. There's a big market for it out there. It's growing constantly. It'll never stop growing. It, it started to disappear, but now it's growing. And so there is an opportunity there for everybody. And remember, dandelion has all the minerals and all the nutrients your body needs in one meal. You can eat the flour, the leaves, and make tea of the roots or just chew on it. It's really good for you. There's nothing bad about it. You can never eat too much of it. And we'll catch you folks tomorrow night. We'll catch you folks tomorrow night. And I'll just make sure there's anybody else there. I didn't say hi. Right. I guess I got everybody. Good stuff, 59 minutes. You gotta like that. I came in on the clue. I gotta like it. Okay, see you later, folks.
And maybe not so fast. <laughs> Gonna make me sign back in. I like it. I get to say goodbye twice. Oh, look. How, it only does that when there's like three times in the last two weeks where I got to sign back in. That's okay. I'll just see if it goes this time. I'll do the wavy thingy again. We'll catch you folks tomorrow night. Thanks.